Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Lori Cheney. I am a freshman I one teacher at Hart County High School. This is, um, I think I've been teaching 20 years now. I was a special education teacher for 12 years and now I'm in the regular ed classroom. My name is Shannon Childress Court and I am a high school resource collaboration teacher. Um, and I teach mainly math this year, but in the past I've also taught science. So that's why I wanted to get my STEM certification and learn more strategies and, and ways to improve my teaching. Okay, so today we're going to talk to you all about data talks. Data talks was something that was totally, um, I really didn't even know what they were until I started doing this. Um, Dale came and met with me one day and we started talking about what I was going to do. My um, presentation about two weeks today, I was like, Dale, I don't know what to do. I'm just really struggling here. And he mentioned data talks. And I was like, okay, I'll look into that. So I did. I started looking and um, finding out what a data talk was. And it's, um, it really it sounds like something that I could really use in my classroom and it would benefit my students. So that's what we're going to talk to you guys today about um, what a data talk is, how to um, do a data talk in your classroom, and we're going to give you lots of resources that you could use to do your own data talk. Okay, so first of all, what is a data talk? It's just a five to ten minute discussion uh, to help students look at data, analyze data, and just talk about the data. A lot of times we have these resources that are just awesome and, and um, this great data that we can find and we're like, okay, how can I get this in my classroom? How can I create a lesson upon this? We don't always have to create a lesson. You can use that data just to have your students analyzing and just looking at the data and, and talking about it, just getting them talking about it. It's similar to a number talk, and I know I've heard a lot about number talks, but instead of numbers, they're actually shown a data representation, data visual, and that's what they're going to discuss. Um, and the thing is, we don't have to be experts on the topic. Like I was not an, I'm not an expert in anything science related at all. But so much of the data that I have been exposed to through this endeavor classes that we've taken are very much science related, and that is not my thing. Um, but I would have to be an expert in it to be able to have my students analyze it. We can learn more about it and find out more about it as they have questions about it. So we're just looking at the data and um, analyzing it and just asking questions about it. While I was doing some research for this, uh, one thing I thought about being a high school teacher is the ACT. And the science part of the ACT is nothing but analyzing graphs and tables and answering questions related to that. And I think so many times, yeah, the kids may know how to draw a graph, but they don't really understand sometimes what the data on that graph represents. So uh, I thought this was would be really good for us to use uh, to help the kids understand more and analyze uh, those graphs and charts more on uh, the ACT. So here are some examples of some uh, data that we could use for a data talk. Here's one that this is the one that I chose to use in my classroom. And um, I did this with my honors class. And it's some it is a topic that they are very familiar with. Um, it is on social media. So I just showed them the graph showed them this visual and put them into groups. And I just said, okay, I just want you guys to look at this. Just talk about this for a few minutes. Talk about with your group. What do you notice? What do you see? Um, what stands out to you? What do you like about this, this data representation? And as they were talking, I would pose another question to them to get them talking about a different aspect of it. So um, they really liked this type of data because obviously it's something that they can relate to very well, social media. Um, and they came up with lots of good observations about this. And um, one thing that we talked about was the type of graph it was. It's something that's kind of, we don't normally see a graph made like that. They talked about the different types of social media um, that was represented here. Most of them said, what is LinkedIn? You know, so we talked about that a little bit. They talked about how Facebook was for old people. And 
Um, so they really were interested in, the, in this type of data. So I think it's important to also make sure that, you know, the data, it can be content specific, it can be content uh, related, but it can also be just data that our students are interested in, just to get them talking and thinking critically. <clears throat> Here's another example that I found. Um, it's on recycling. So it's just, okay, so I would just show the graph and let the students talk about what they see. So you have all the different countries represented, you have percentages, you have bar graphs, and then you can just have the students talk about the data that they see. And, we have a lot of NASA data that we have learned about. Like I knew, I knew that there was a lot of data out there, but through the Endeavor courses that we have taken, they have really um, brought to my attention so many resources that are out there for us to use. And like I said, I'm not a science teacher, but there are, there's so much out there that we can use in the math classroom. Um, and this is just another, some other resources. And we're gonna give you guys a list of resources also that I think are just excellent to have. I wanna go on, and, uh, click on it, I'm gonna move it down. Sorry, that top tab's in my way there. Okay, and here's some uh, pictures of some of my students that while they're taking while they're doing their data talk. So I also, I also posted um, the data visualization on their Google Classroom so that they can access it and have it in front of them as they were um, looking at it also instead of just on the board. So what I want us to do now is I'm going to put a data representation on the screen and I, we're going to do a data talk here right now as an example. I'm sorry, no, 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 back up. We're not gonna do that yet. I want you all to watch this video. This is an example of a data talk. It's not on, there we go. Speakers have been used. Take some time, take a look at it. Do you have any thoughts on either of them, both of them? Well, I think it's interesting how many people still prefer print books because with all like the, it's kind of like the digital age and like so many people are using like computers and stuff, but people still prefer to read books that are printed. Where, where are you getting that from? Like, what are you looking at that tells you that? Because the pie chart, it says 37% of people <coughs> read, read print books only in the last 12 months. Right. Yeah. Is notebooks like they don't read or is it like they don't use any of these like like they don't i don't know if there's a possible way to not do any like print you know, that's digital. a really good question i honestly had not thought about that i'm wondering because it says it's a percentage of adults who say they have read blank in the previous month so what do you think they probably didn't read i don't know i feel like that's more yeah, that, that, that seems, seems like a reasonable assumption. Yeah. But I haven't thought about that. That's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot of people that read no books then in a year. What else? In 2019, um, people read more books, or more, listened to more audiobooks than um, in past years. Than ever before, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. It was um, actually the title for the article this was in was like 
more audiobooks than ever before. Like, or, so it was like the big headline they drew from this. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, clearly growing in popularity. Where did you listen to audiobooks? I used to. You do a little bit, yeah. I do quite a bit. Is it like an ebook, just a digital book? Yeah. I oh, think okay. Ebook is mostly like, you know, it could be on Kindle or your computer or whatever, but I think so. Okay, so that was just an example of a data talk. Um, and if you notice, there were lots of questions. And one time the teacher even said, you know, I don't really know. I hadn't thought about that before. So once again, it's okay that you don't know everything about um, the data that you're sharing. It's something that you all that can be just lead to more discussion within the classroom. I cannot get that tab to go away. I wonder if I can move it. Okay, so here is a data visualization and we're going to do a data talk on this. So it's a number of endangered, endangered species is rising. So you have the number of animal species um, by class. You've got mammals, reptiles, birds, and insects. So we're just gonna take a look at this data and I'm gonna give you all a few minutes just to look at it and come up with some um, you know, questions that you may have or uh, things that you might notice about the data. So we have the years from 2007, 10, 13, 16, and 19. So what is something that you notice about this data? Each year it's increasing. Okay, each year it's increasing. And then we might talk about why do you think, why do you think that is? Why, why would that, could that be happening? Absolutely. Yeah, I think mine would too. They would they would look at the fish. What are some other things that you notice? Amphibians are staying pretty static. Yes, they are. Mammals, uh huh. Yes, mammals. Yes. And my students, I, I'm I'm like you. They would they would start talking about, okay, now what would be what would be an example of a reptile? They would they would start talking about things like that. What kind of animals or or you know reptiles do we have around here? They always and and I think that's good that they relate that back to what they know. So they would start talking about like you said, hunting and fishing and things like that. Also, also you can tie in food webs and those types of things because if there's less insects, then how is that going to impact other species, um, animal species, because that may be what they eat. So those types of questions too might come out more science related. Absolutely. And once again, like I said, I'm, I'm an algebra teacher and I would use this in my classroom, even though this is very much science related, but um, just looking at the data and looking at the numbers and um, letting the students, letting students see that. I mean, because if you, and one thing that I would notice as a math teacher, I would think, oh my gosh, from 2007 to 19, the total number has almost doubled. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, so it's, it's just, it doesn't have to be in your content related. It doesn't even have to go along with a lesson for the day, but it's just getting the students talking about data. And like Shannon said, you know, we are, um, ACT is very important and having the students learn to look at graphs and look at data representations and be able to interpret those is, is very important for their um, critical thinking skills and it's definitely going to help them when it comes to ACT. And, you know, this could lead to a lot of other discussions as well. And this is for every student, you know, special ed students, 
regular ed students, uh, English second language students. I mean, they can look at this and and figure out and put, have input into this conversation. And like I said, you know, data talk is going to be five to ten minutes. You might, you know, you might not have a lot of discussion that day, so it might not it may not last as long, um, or it may lead to a really good discussion that takes up you know, half your class, which is great also, as long as your students are engaged and um, participating, I think it's, that's definitely a win there. And we're going to look at, uh, so here's some of the mathematical practices. I know that um, we always want to tie to this, and I think here are some that I think a data talk would absolutely uh, cover for us would be reason abstractly and quantitatively. We definitely want our students to learn how to do that. Construct viable, viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. One student may have a, um, an opinion about how the data is represented and another student may think it's represented, you know, showing a different um, aspect of it. So that would be one way that they could critique and argue with one another and look for and make sense or make use of structure. Here are some real world resources that I wanted to share with you all. Like I said, I know I've said this a couple of times about our Endeavor um, classes that we've taken, but we have really been exposed to some awesome resources. So I just wanted to share a few of these with you all. Here's another. And Shannon's going to give you a, um, the little salmon color paper here, and that's just some resources different than what is on here that are really good as well. This is the Earth Observatory, and, and it, this is, it's kind of one of those things where you, you have to, some of these you really have to dig and see what's there, but it is just amazing everything that's out here um, that our students would be so interested in. That was related to uh, climate change uh, and how it would impact our area of Kentucky. And since so many of our students hunt, fish, and farm, uh, how that would change uh, our area, you know, that would be something that the kids would be interested in. And then uh, also to tie in how that impact impacts us economically, you know? So uh, if we have droughts, there's not enough food and there's not enough hay for the cattle, uh, there's, you know, everything impacts us from the climate change. And so that was one thing and you can, one of these sites you can get on and it actually shows over the years how things have changed. It was just, it was very, very interesting to me. Uh, but that also could, you know, be something that the kids could look at. And I use that. I mean, so many people, it depends on where you live. We don't live near an ocean. So those kinds of things may not be as interesting to our students, but there are so many resources. About, about climate change uh, that is related to Kentucky. So that is just something that I thought would be interesting for, uh, for our students and how it would impact them. You know, we talk about data a lot and having our students um, analyze data, but it's, it's very time consuming to go gather that data yourself. And um, a lot of times that's that's difficult for our students to do as well. So the data's here, you know, it's right here for us. And we can just, um, as if we have the resources and know how to go find it, like here's a map for um, drought. And this would be something that you could easily have a data talk about. You know, just put this up here and have students talk about it because we all, you know, being living, especially living in a rural area, most of our students have um, some type of a tie to a farm or a farmer, and they know what a drought's gonna do to their livelihood for the summer. And they know, you know, some of our, a lot of my students, a lot of my guys uh, work in hay. And if they're having a drought, they're not gonna have a whole lot of work that summer because they're not gonna have a lot of hay to haul in. So, you know, this is something that they can relate to. And I think that really makes this more interesting to our students. And, and again- That's what STEM is about. I mean, you're supposed to, 
take information and make it real world to our students. You know, just standing in front of them and lecturing and not having engaging conversations and uh, using real world examples, you know, that that's boring to students. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do, get my STEM certification because I wanted to make do some planning and make uh, some of my lessons more engaging uh, and more real world related. Here's another um, place where we can really do a lot of research and you've got different topics. Uh, what is my audience? You do have different grade levels, your topic, the resource type. There are so many resources out here that we can use um, for our students. Very, very good resources here. And this is all, like I said, these are all on my um, presentation that you all can get to. This one was really cool, I thought. It's just data.gov. I mean, it has data on everything. It's just amazing what you can find here. So lots and lots of different data here. Okay, so I was hoping that we would all, um, I guess I should have communicated a little better with Bill. But um, I was thinking that maybe we would have time here to um, for you all to look at some different data resources and come up with some um, come up with a type of a some type of data that you would like to use in your classroom. So um, I know we don't have our I'm used to always bringing our computers uh -huh. with us to Greg, so I'm just used to that. But that's okay. So um, we'll just take a couple minutes here, and you can just think about it on your own. Maybe look over. Um, maybe some of the resources that I've shown you already. And we'll just talk about what types of data you could use in your classroom. What types of data you think your students would like. And if you can think of something you're like, I really think they'd like to see data on this. You let me know and Shannon know, and we'll try to find you something um, in some of our resources up here. And I think one of the most important things is just to find something that's interesting to your students and find something I know this it and I know you all can relate to this as well it needs to be visually appealing to your students as well just like that first graph I showed you that was just a different looking graph lots of colors and they were interested in that as soon as I put that up on the board we talk about your special needs students one thing after uh, doing all this is I have decided that I want to do a little more research on data talks and uh, in the fall, I want to start having my students, because I teach special education, to analyze their own data and progress on their IEP goals. So, um, of course, I always give assessments and then we do uh, weekly little, little checks. And uh, that's just something that I think that it would, it, the students would be more engaged in their learning if they understood their progress or what they need to work on. And so that's something that, that I personally am gonna do. Uh, it will be more of an individual type thing, uh, but I can also do the whole class, just not put names on there. And we can also look and see if the class is progressing as well. So that's just something that I am going to do in my classroom as a special education teacher. Hey, do you have any? Does anyone have you all have any ideas of what um, types of data that you may want to do a data talk with with your students? Anybody have any ideas? Y'all teach? Yeah. And so, like, we have to teach them how to do graphs and stuff like that. But mostly it's like making things, making graphs. So, we do, we do like, talk about data, graphs, and stuff like that. But it's stuff that we make. So, maybe it's their favorite pets, and then uh -huh. we see them talk about, well, who, which one would like more? How do you think they like that more? Do you think they like more than what they have? We've done that, but it was uh, just their favorite animal that we do already. So we've got a lot to cover with um, finding some of the things 
Um, the last the last paper that why is this why is this doing this? The last page that Shannon just handed you all, the U cubed, that was um, when I found that I was really that's why I'm trying to get to this. I don't know why this came up, <laughs> but we'll go through this anyway. Um, since you said you're kindergarten, there are, this, this website is really, really interesting. And um, there are tasks here for all age groups. And um, there are data talk resources. If you just go here and type in data talk. And you know you could do this with your with your kindergarten um, students, and it's all age. This is K through twelve. Yes, it is mm -hmm. K through twelve. So, here we go. Data talks right here, and it gives you lots and lots of examples. Over, I know one of them was like over. Here we go. Where are my pictures? There are a lot that go down to kindergarten, and I don't know why my pictures aren't showing up. When I was doing this at home, it was showing up. So, like, here's one on melting ice. That's kind of might be a little much for kindergarten, I think. But there are some that are very visually appealing, and it would be for kindergarten students, I think, as well. Like, here's one, favorite seasons. This is something that you could use, and it's, you know, it's very visually appealing to our students, you know, colorful and maybe make one of their own and then compare it to um, this one as well. So this, this resource, this U cubed, it just has so many good resources. Now the pictures are starting to pop up. And um, here they have their favorite fruits, popular fruits. And um, here's one that I am gonna use with my students because, you know, like I said, I teach freshmen and of course, they all, the majority, love sports. So here's one, Steph Curry, um, show, just showing where does he shoot, where does he shoot from on the floor and where is he most likely to hit or miss? So I think this would, you know, this is something that a lot of uh, students would be very interested in is if they don't play basketball, they probably play uh, 2K and they have him on their team, I'm sure, <laughs> like my son does. So- oh, the dog one. The yeah, right down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are so many on this on this resource here on this U-cubed, and it is amazing what this. And I, I was never. You all may be very familiar with this site, and I, I was not. But there are a lot of good resources here. I think that the main thing is you can pretty much find something that most of the students uh, are interested in or can relate to. Uh, but this has lots of resources on it. And that's why I wanted to give you this handout just so you wouldn't forget about this resource because this is the U-Cubed. I, I printed this off of U-Cubed and it has a few, um, the one on the back, this is the Steph Curry one on the back, um, as well as one about a hot dog eating contest. So I just wanted you to have this in your hand so that you wouldn't forget about this site. Spend some time looking at it because like I said, it's it really is amazing what all is on here. Um, and everything is free that I have found so far. All, where there are tasks, there are lesson plans. There is a whole, um, like a, we like four weeks of hands-on uh, STEM related lessons for algebra, which was very interesting to me. And it's, it's just very, very, in, in very informative. I think it would be helpful to a lot of people. Something else that I have been thinking about and wanting to do is uh, integrate more of the algebra into our integrated science and vice versa. And um, try to work with the science teacher, uh, resource teacher, which I teach resource. And hopefully we can do some lessons that are related to each other. And so that the students, even though we have to teach things uh, in isolation, we don't have to, you know? And then we can refer back to each other's, uh, what we've been doing, and how algebra relates to science and how science can relate to algebra. That is something that I've been thinking about. Um, 
I was hoping that maybe if the schedule this year would work out, then maybe I could teach both. And that would be a lot easier, but <laughs> with scheduling, y'all know how that goes. So, but I. <laughs> uh, plus, we don't know how many virtual students we have next year. If there's going to be virtual students, then, you know, that whole, whole thing. But that is something that I have really uh, put a lot of thought into. And since I've been doing these classes, uh, watching Tara and Curtis. And, and Lori start doing some of these things in their classroom, um, I, which you all are gonna to get to see that because uh, Tara has a, a session and so does Curtis. Uh, some really hands-on things. The students so many times ask me, when am I ever gonna use this? And if we would incorporate more of the real world things, then we would hear that less. <laughs> you know, kids don't realize they use algebra every day you know, and uh, geometry, if you are ever going to own a home, you need to know the basics of geometry. So those are also some things you could bring up and talk about uh, with your students as to why we need to learn these things. And uh, if you can, can relate that to something you're interested in, and it doesn't matter if they're regular ed or special ed, and uh, that's something that, because I collaborate in Tara's room, that we noticed that when it came to building the rockets, you when you walked in the classroom and heard the discussions and saw the product, you couldn't tell who was my special ed students and who were the regular ed students. You would have no idea. And uh, in fact, one thing that um, and Curtis will tell you is that you could same thing with his. In fact, the kids who normally the, the kids who normally academically were successful really struggled with the hands-on things. So those are the kinds of things that as teachers, we need to, to have some discussion with our students about, and we need to figure out how we can incorporate more STEM. And, you know, that's where our world is going towards. You know, we have to know about science, technology, engineering, and math. You have to, there are, there are going to be more and more STEM jobs out there and we have to prepare our students uh, in that way. And I think as high school teachers, we really, that's really where we are all the time. How, how can we get them there? What can we do to, to help them be successful and to pick a career that they're not only good at, but maybe they're just really interested and passionate about. So making an A doesn't mean that you always have an understanding of what's going on. And so many of our students who uh, are special education students, they, they think, you know, they have to make an A to understand something. And I'm like, no, you, you don't have to make an A. You don't have to make a B. I, I never was a straight A student, you know? So, you know, getting them to understand that there are so many things out there that they can do that is related to STEM. And um, I'm just, I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to, to do this certification. So. And I, as, a, as an algebra teacher, I really do struggle with hands on. I really do. Um, it's, it's hard for me to come up with the time to develop the lessons that um, with hands on. So for me personally, the the resources the online data that's always there you know the data is there for us and then we can just use that data to you know we can use that data instead of having to come up with our own it's wonderful when you can do that but like i said that's something that i've always struggled with is the hands-on because i feel like um, it takes so much time and i know that's not the case i know it's, it's but in my mind it is so when i have these resources here that i can use their data that they've already found and let my students even though they're not Coming up with the data, but they they can still use that that they they can relate to and that is meaningful to them, <clears throat> and they can they can learn from that data as well. So that's something that I really like about the resources and the data talks is that I feel like this is something that's very doable and it's it's very useful as well. Um, and I know I should have done this at the beginning, but do you two teach as well? Are classroom teachers? Yes, I teach first grade. First grade. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know who these three are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you all do you all think that this is something that could be beneficial in your classroom? Just on top of that at all. Yeah, there's been just more movement for me as a science teacher. I know everybody uh, is a little sympathetic and aesthetic to uh, I'm not tested. So uh, I get a lot put on me for focusing on, uh, which I mean, it's just natural, but literacy strategies and math in my classroom as well, which is naturally in there, but there's a push for me to cover some standards specifically other class, other content standards uh, for them for K prep purposes. But um, this was something that we talked about uh, as a struggle um, streaming down from our high school ACT scores, like you all said, um, and even talking to them after high school basketball. So as soon as they got done with the juniors, got done with ACT a couple weeks ago, they were just like, science, oh my gosh, that sucks. <laughs> And yeah, you know, it, my score was awful, yeah. and so this has been a conversation in our district on how to improve that. So I think this will be a great resource. Yeah. As a high school principal, that's one thing that you guys can help us with immensely. I think very well with the school to get data analysis mm -hmm. and how to look at maps and that like that. Mm -hmm. right. And if we can begin stealing, instilling that from fifth grade up, then that will help greatly by the time they get to high school to be able to get what they can get. So one thing that's so powerful about this is too that while yes, it's data analysis and it's integrating the science um, and analyzing, it is literacy. Yeah. You know, so you you are doing just that um, by introducing them to these graphs and having them analyze and you to be reading. You know, all materials. It's not um, an understanding. It's not just reading a book. It's literacy. But, you know, this is such an important form of literacy that I think we often let take a back seat. And even in, even in the CDE one, mm -hmm. where a lot of times they have to read technical manuals in order to well or in order to work on a diesel mechanic, or any of those things, the more that they can learn how to do those type of things. You know, one thing, like when I told y'all we were doing the social media one, when they were saying, what's LinkedIn? What's LinkedIn? I said, look it up. You know, look it up. You tell me what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. So, you know, that was, they would look that up and read it and tell us, oh, okay. So, okay, now share with us. Tell us what it is. And um, so, you know, just getting them talking, getting them talking about the data. And, um, you know, because on that ACT, there are so many different types of graphs. Uh -huh. And there are so many different types of graphs out there on, on this data that we could uh, share with them and have them analyze. So, but like I said, I think it's it was very interesting and kind of eye opening to me that it didn't have to be math related. It can be anything uh, to get them to to analyze that and, and look at that. Any other comments, questions? Okay. I would encourage you all to look at that YouTube website. I think it's just like, it's really, really good. Lots of good resources on there. Okay, and it's free. And it's free. <laughs> and it's made by teachers for teachers and it's, and it's free. So it's very good. There are also, you know, if you all use Teacher Pay Teacher, there's also a lot of things that teachers have developed to use with Data Talks. So that's something that I got on and looked at as well. Um, I would rather pay for something that I can use them to have to develop it myself, you know. So th there's also resources on Teacher Pay Teacher uh, for data talks and number talks and any of that. Okay, that's all I have for this. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.